Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Boys, this is Riley Williams. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Bobcat Field on the beautiful West Campus of Georgia College. I'm Riley Williams alongside Graham Hill, and we will keep you uh, entertained during this soccer game today. A nice little Peach Belt Conference matchup against Young Harris College. The Bobcats coming in at 10-3-3 overall, and Young Harris is 5-7 overall. 3-5 in the Peach Belt. The Bobcats are 3-2-3 three, three in the Peach Belt. Grant, why don't you, uh, well, first off, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Riley. Thanks for, thanks for bringing us in. This yeah. is a, uh, an important game as far as postseason is concerned. Both teams uh, in the playoff position right now for the Peach Belt Conference with Young Harris sitting at seventh and Georgia College just a couple spots ahead at fifth place. So this, do this game does have some, some significance as far as the Peach Belt is concerned. 
Uh, but I'll get us started, started with the lineups for Young Harris at goalie. Uh, number one, Peen Van Campen. Number three, Miranda Simpson. Number six, Colleen Johnson. Number 11, Bailey Roche. Number 14, Layla Muscat. Number 15, Madison Patton. Number 16, Elin Peterson. Or Peterson. Number 18, Maria Guzman. Number 20, Lucero Roballo. Number 21, Hadley Hughes. And number 24, Biani Serrano. And for the Bobcats, a couple changes today. At keeper, Ashley Graham. Coming in at midfield, Becca Morris. At defender, Hannah Asbell. At midfield, Brooke Adams. At defender, Aaron Ferris. And at midfield, Kai Jeffries. Defender, Savannah Deval. Another defender, Unbjorg Omar's daughter. Forward, Cassie Balzano. Forward, Kayla Ruiz. And forward, Sophia Lekas, who has been on a tear recently. Now nearing the top of the Peach Belt Conference leaderboard as far as goals. And now tied with Amanda Bartholomew for Georgia College lead with eight goals on the season. Yeah. Uh, Sophia's been doing a great job this season and uh, having, a, having a huge impact on the, the Bobcats' goal-scoring opportunities. Uh, Georgia College coming off a 5-0 victory against Converse College this past Monday. It was senior day here at Bobcat Field. A big turnout for Georgia College as we celebrated the seniors and uh, sent them off. Well, not sent them off because this is our last home game, but, but sent them off on a, on a high note. A good win, 5-0. So let's see if we can carry that momentum. On to this game against Young Harris. As we are getting set to kick off, Georgia College wearing green stri pinstripes. Uh, jerseys heading from right to left on your screen. Young Harris wearing the purple shirts, white pants heading from left to right on your screen. And we'll get things going. Lekas, we're going to stay on this left side. I feel like a good bit with that connection between Lekas and Omar's daughter. They are they they are definitely have some telepathy something going on and it's 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 nice it's definitely been working for the Bobcats this year we see it seen it throughout the game the, the past couple times that you got generate a lot of opportunities Uno playing these long balls into the forwards on the left side oftentimes Sophia Lekis gone on the right side Ruiz has it finds Brooke Adams as they're going to try to go one two they're no good Stopped by the young Harris defense. Young Harris kind of mixed up back there, but they finally got it over to the left side as Kai Jeffries intercepts the ball. Jeffries had a huge game two games ago, two home games ago, excuse me, as she definitely had my player of the game stat. She came up big with, a, with an assist and just played stellar defense all game. Yeah, Kai has really been a, a focal point for Georgia College this season, and she is only a sophomore, so Kai has a really, really bright career ahead of her here at Georgia College, but she's been, been really crucial as that, that holding midfield player to really lock down the right in front of that, that back line and supplement the defense whenever they need support, but she also has that ability on the ball to get forward and break these counterattacks away and play, play those assists as she had a couple games ago against, uh, or against uh, Clayton State. I almost couldn't remember either. <laughs> I'm pull that one out of my knowledge bank. I know. Young Harris now back right side. Playing it forward up to Rubio. Rubio trying to find number 15, Madison Patton. Omar's daughter is all over it. She makes a couple of moves and will just clear it up the left side. Trying to find Lekas, but she'll just let it slide out the sideline. Number three, Miranda Simpson, will toss it on in for the Mountain Lions. Lekas has it on the left. Nice turn, tries to find Becca Morris. Just a little too much pace on that ball for Morris to catch up to it. Again, we have Simpson tossing it in. Omar's daughter finding it at her feet. Tries to go midfield to Ruiz, no good. Simpson and Lekas battling. Lekas gets a foot on it, has possession. There's number 10, excuse me, yeah, 18. That is Maria Guzman, thought that was a 10. 
Anyways, Becca Morris now on the left side. Morris keeps at her feet fairly well. Finds Jeffries wide open in the middle. And we'll just reset in the back with Asbel. Yeah, I'm su surprised they surprised they went back there. It looked like they had some numbers there with Becca Morris getting up ahead on the left side. They could have uh, had a little bit of an advantage with Sophia Lekis. Well, the Bobcats are going all the way back to Graham. And almost giving up a really not needed turnover right there. Ruiz trying to make a couple moves. Brooke Adams now. We're getting mixed up. Kayla Ruiz staying on it. She has the pace. We saw that a couple of games ago to, to get by some defenders. As that ball is cleared away by number 14. That is Moose, Moose Cat? Muscat? Is that how I said it? Is that how we say it? Leia Muscat. We are, we are learning names as we go here, folks. Bear with us. Lekas now on the attack. She fakes across to the left foot. She's going to have one. That'll just soar over. Lekas, she's deadly over there on the left with that cutback. That's exactly how she scored a couple of games ago against Clayton State. So be on the lookout, everybody, for Sophia Lekas. That, is, that has been her crucial move all season yeah. long. I mean, honestly, at this point, if you watch any kind of film on, on Sophia, you'd be expecting her to do that, but she's so good at getting that ball on, onto her stronger right foot. And once she gets it onto that foot and finds a little bit of space in and around that box, you know she's going to be putting it somewhere near the target, and she's very dangerous with that powerful right leg. Exactly. Playing into the midfield here. Becca Morris out wide. Uno goes 1-2. Two. Two back to Morris. Morris pointing, sending Lekas on. Good ball. It stays in. Simpson tracking Le Lekas. Lekas will... Knock it on out for a goal kick. That was really, really well done by that right back, Simpson, for Young Harris. Sophia Lekas has a whole lot of pace as, on, that, on that left wing, and be, to be able to keep up with her and usher the ball safely out of play, really well done by Young Harris there. So Guzman tries to play it up the right side for the mountain lines, but nothing going. Now Brooke Adams is all the way back. And she'll just pass it back to Ashley Graham. Say, hey, let's try this again. Balzano tries to send Lekas again. I I never understand how Lekas just doesn't get tired after the first three runs. I mean, I mean that's all she does is just is just make these long runs up the sideline, and the majority of the time they work, but. She must have unbelievable stamina to keep to keep up these runs. Well, coaches Matt Sive and Hope Clark definitely definitely keep their their players in shape throughout the season, um, and especially with the depth that Georgia College has, they they I'm sure they preach you know getting going 100 percent when you're on the field because there's someone that's going to be able to come in and supplement that attack. Exactly. So that's the first real, not even real scare. That's just the first touch Graham's had from the opposing team. That was number 20, Lucero Rubio, that uh, played the ball into Graham's hands. Here goes Guzman up the right wing, plays it forward to Patton. Patton dribbling, tries to cross all the way over, finds number 11, Bailey Roche. As that is knocked away by Ferris, and the Bobcats regain possession. Morris will just play it out left again. Here we go down the left side once more. Finding Omar's daughter. She's known for these long overlapping runs. That ball just escaped out of bounds. Number six, Colleen Johnson. Had a nice little defensive stop there, keeping the momentum kind of calmed down from the Bobcats side. Yeah, well, well covered. She saw that her uh, right back was a little bit out of position and uh, had to come over and, and support there. Rabio trying to switch fields. Looking up for number 11, Roche. And we'll go all the way back to the keeper. Graham will punt it back out. A nice touch there from Kayla Ruiz. Is she kind of one touch that out of the air and earned the Bobcats a throw in? She made that look so easy, Riley. I yeah. mean, that ball was coming in with a whole lot of pace from from goalkeeper Ashley Graham. But she just took that ball out of the air and just the ball died on her foot. 
Tossed in by Ferris. And it'll just go out for a young Harris throw in. A little back and forth action here early on. Nine minutes into the game. Balzano tried to get there, but is cleared away by the Mountain Line defender. Couldn't tell who it was. We have Serrano now on the ball. She's going to take a long shot, and Graham's not even phased by it. She just taps it with her foot. She'll bring it back up to the top of the box, play with the defender. Ashley Graham, always a, a force at the back for Georgia College. She is second in the peach belt in goals against. Wow. Only 10 goals put into her net this season. Little miscommunication there by the back line. Svan Vall and Umberg Omar's daughter didn't really know what was going on between the two of them, so they just cleared it out. Rabio on the ball, or excuse me, Guzman. Patton crosses it in, and that is blocked. Savannah Duvall out for the first corner of the game. The Mountain Lions corner. That kind of miscommunication is not something you see very often with yeah. this back line. I mean, this back four has been the same all season ever since Kai Jeffries was moved up into that holding midfield spot. So this de defense has played together basically all season long, so they're going to be very tough to break down for Young Harris. Kick is up and away into the middle of the box. Oh, wow, a nice header there from, I couldn't tell, was that 14? But anyways, it went in the back of the net right over Ashley Graham's head. She really didn't see it coming. Beautiful place ball. Number three. Number three, that is Miranda Simpson. Miranda Simpson getting a goal. A goal from the back for Young Harris College. That set piece was really well worked. Simpson having herself a good game. We've said her name a couple yeah. times. Miranda Simpson doing well on the, on the right side at the back for Young Harris, defending the dangerous Sophia Lekas, and now gets herself on the score sheet. That's the commentator's curse, Riley, talking about how, I know. how successful our back line has been and the lack of goals scored against us this season. And immediately, Young Harris puts one in the back of the net. We shouldn't have ever brought that up. We shouldn't have ever made that a thing. Well, we talked about it last uh, against Clayton State, and we held a clean sheet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it is kind of rare for the Bobcats to get scored on at home. We, I'm pretty sure we're unbeaten at home this mm -hmm, year. We are. So I'm not too worried once we get our offense going, maybe kind of start passing a little more, opening up some more lanes, we'll get some more opportunities on goal. Now, this is something we've noticed in the, the past couple of games is that we have struggled just a little bit defending set pieces. We, against yeah. Clayton State, that seemed to be the only way that Clayton State was able to get many touches towards frame Yeah, uh, in the box was really off of set pieces and headers. Um, we saw Manoli Baccarizo getting on the end of a few yep. a few crosses in the box, but unable to put one in the back of the net. Yeah, there's two miscommunication errors on the game so far for the Bobcats as Jeffries and Adams really couldn't do anything. That's a long shot there from number 11, Bailey Roche, as the Bobcats are really kind of on their heels right now. Ashley Graham showing a little bit of frustration. She'll punt it away. You know, that's something we, we saw against Clayton State as well. We, you know, we didn't have our best start to the game. Yeah. Uh, Clayton State did look like they were they were the more aggressive of the two teams at the beginning of the game. Um, but Georgia College was able to, to rein it in and, and play really well the rest of the game to, for that 2-0 win. So we'll see, uh, have to see a little bit of resilience here from Georgia College. There's another miscommunication there as that pass from Brooke Adams goes out of play. Or Becca Morris, excuse me. Yeah, I don't think this whole long ball deal down the left side has been working so far. And it usually does. So I think that's kind of what's throwing us off a little bit is because we're used to just, hey, Sophia, go get this. And both times, or a couple of times, she's just been met back there by the center defender, Colleen Johnson, as she kind of takes over that right back um, position when the right back goes up to press. So we're not used to this so far as the Bobcats cleared away. So maybe... We make some adjustments and switch up our attack style then we can get something going. You know, maybe Young Harris did watch film. It looks like they, they're set up well at the back to defend against specifically Sophia Lakis is, is that when that right back gets beaten, there's all, both or a few times there's always been somebody there to cover. Yep. So maybe we need to switch it over here to the right side, which we do with Ferris and Ruiz now pressing up. 
Ruiz might get pace. to it. Ah, almost. So it'll go out for a goal kick. Ruiz made a, made up about a five yard gap in about 25 yards of running. Yeah, she's quick. I do remember a couple of a couple of balls that were played down the right side in the second half last game, where where she just kind of caught caught wind and just took off. By the way, we'll start again, reset from the back. Graham over to Omar's daughter. Omar's daughter carrying, has time with the ball. Kind of loses it, but in her favor, in our favor, excuse me. Lekas now on the ball, cuts right, is getting fouled. Yeah, she she ran right into the defender. The defender just kind of yanked her down. So we hear Mr. Lekas over here wanting the call. That, he gets it. And that foul just on the edge of the box. The contact might have continued into the box. But because it started on the, uh, just outside the box, it will not be a penalty kick. So here's our dangerous free kick taker in Umbjorg Omar's daughter. And she nailed one to the top right corner earlier in the season. That was her first goal in the season. In my opinion, the best goal of the Bobcats season. Let's see if she can do that again. It's away. <gasps> oh, it was. <laughs> inches away, Uno. Just about a, six inches away from doing it again. Man, she has an accurate rocket of a right leg. Folks, Robayo in the middle with the ball. Going on the left side now are the Mountain Lions. 16, Peterson tries to play up. It's met by the Bobcat defense. Guzman back out left. Ferris tracking, stays with the ball, and it'll just play out of bounds. As you can see, the sun's starting to set over those trees yeah. coming right towards our cameras, right in me and Riley's faces over here. Can't see anything. Ruiz had a lazy touch there, but it's cleared out by the Mountain Lions. Be a bobcat throw in. Ferris down line, finding Balzano. Balzano Ruiz tried to go up the line. No good, though. Guzman has plenty of time, but she's going to choose to play it all the way over to Patton, who's met by two bobcat defenders. Now we're just going to reset all the Mountain Lions. Simpson, who... Is the goal scorer of the game so far, the lone goal scorer. Five, oh, goodness gracious. We're going to get a PK. We are going to get a PK. First one I've seen all season. Number 11, Bailey Roche, drew the foul in the box. She kind of got sandwiched in between two defenders there. And That was a pretty, pretty clear call yeah, there. There yeah. was a, definitely a, a shove from behind, knocked her off balance. Um, so a Referee, absolutely no hesitation pointing to the spot there. You know, sometimes you, you want to argue against the call, but right there is just a little too obvious. Here we go, Ashley Graham in the, in the goal, and it just squeezes by on the right side. That is number 11, Bailey Roche, with her first goal of the game. It is 2-0 in favor of Young Harris. Only 15 minutes in. And Georgia College has their work cut out for them for the rest of this match. But you can see here the Georgia College supporters getting their, their noise up a little bit, trying to get the, get the Bobcats woken up here today. But Georgia College is gonna need to change a lot of things here. As here's one change as Sophia Bonzer coming in for Becca Morris. Sophia Bonzer usually a starter, not in the, the starting 11 today, but she's gonna come in for, for Becca Morris. Maybe Hope Clark looking for, for some more solidity in the middle of the yeah. field. Even though Morris, I feel like, is a really solid defender. She's just a little younger than uh, Bonzer is. So we'll see if this changes anything up. I think we're kind of pressing up, too. We've got five defender, excuse me, five attackers running towards the box right now. Zalekis is playing. Oh, she's going to be called offsides. There's everything going the Mountain Lions way right now, and the Bobcats are just have no momentum their way. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely a, a rough start for George College here today. But the the talent that we have up front and the the connect the link up play that we have with our midfielders and even our our fullbacks is definitely we're we're in good shape to to get a couple goals and at least uh, get a point out of this game. If we can get one goal before halftime, I, I think I think we'll we'll be a little bit more confident. Which we I mean we're on the attack right now. We have plenty of plenty of attackers up in the box. Valzano now pressing. Nice move. Adams gonna try and find Legas. It turns back in. Tries to cross it into Ruiz and nothing doing as that'll go straight to the keeper. And it looked like there was a, a little bit of a miscommunication there is that Ruiz what didn't seem like she looked, knew that uh, Brooke was going to be playing the ball into the box. But that was a good ball played by Brooke Adams, but Ruiz was just slightly unable to get on the end of it. Bonds are with the interception. Sticks with it. Sends Lekas. Lekas has plenty of space to work with. Here comes Johnson, though, tracking her down. Ah, oh, Lekas. Just let it escape. Her touch right there as it goes out for a goal kick. She's showing obvious frustration. Yes, the, the ball from Bonzer for, did force her a little bit wide, but I am surprised that she took that kind of touch. I was thinking that she was going to slow the ball up and wait for support to arrive, uh, but it looked like she didn't quite realize how much space she had. Yeah, and in these situations, when, when you go down and, and you know you have a goal-scoring ability, you kind of just want to sometimes take it upon yourself to, to play and to maybe make a, something happen out of nothing. And that might have been one of those situations there, but she definitely has the goal scoring ability to do that. Decent ball there from Bonzer up the right side. But young young Harris is just all over it. They've they're playing almost five back with number sixteen Peterson. They're holding defensive midfielder as she's almost acting like a fifth person on that back line. That ball was such a good idea from Lekas, but couldn't quite get it over the left back's head. Intercepted by Ruiz. Now out wide to Lekas. Lekas has space. She took she take a hard touch there, and she'll get called for a foul. And all the momentum we had right there just stopped dead. Van Coppen. Sends it. Tries to go up the left side. Do the mountain lines. Is, I thought that might have been a foul on Ruiz. She kind of was pushed for the back there, but Ferris now has it on the right side. Finds Jeffries in the middle. Jeffries also playing, or again, playing that holding defensive midfielder spot. Bonzer. Draws a foul there from number 18, Maria Guzman. And the Bobcats will have a free kick just inside midfield. That foul looked uh, a little bit soft. Maybe a makeup call for the, the lack of a, a call on the, that push in the back. Yep. On Ruiz. Savannah Duvall, the senior, back to take it. She's going to send it into the box. Has Lekas. Lekas has a touch. What a shot, Sophia Lekas. One touch. From Savannah Duvall all the way from midfield. Sophia Lekas with her ninth goal on the season. And what a ball. A perfectly executed free kick, give, giving Sophia Lekas that ninth goal on the season. Now fourth in the Peach Belt Conference this season in goals. And that is just what Georgia College needed to get a little bit of momentum in the middle of this first half to get ourselves back in the game. And that's just how quickly Georgia College can strike. That's the kind of attacking power we, ha we have but a fantastic ball from Savannah Duval to give Sophia Lekas a chance. And then that sliding touch with that right foot gets the Bobcats back in this game. 20 minutes played, Young Harris two, Georgia College one. Great attacking play, set piece from Georgia College there. And what a way to end it, Sophia Lekas. No surprise from her. As we get back going, Ruiz trying to take on the defender on the right side. Ruiz and Muscat have been battling all day as we, we've been trying to go down the right side a little bit more since this left side hadn't been working out. Ruiz back on the ball. Sticks with it. Somehow this ball's still in bounds. I would have figured it would have gone out by now. 
Jeffries with the interception. Jeffries, nice turn in the midfield. Has Bonzer. We're looking to switch. Omar's daughter is open. She gets it from a Bergamini twin. That's Alyssa. Uno making moves. Just falls over. She looks like she might have tripped up on the ball. Nice one-touch pass there from Savannah Duvall as the Bobcats look to reset. Kai Jeffries and Peterson, Elon Peterson. Nice little battle going on in midfield. Bonds are now. Plays it back. Safe play to Omar's daughter. Omar's daughter takes a step over, surveys the field. Jeffries, we're just kind of at a standstill now, looking for the attack. Finds Ferris. Oh, just gets out of bounds. Good idea, though, trying to switch the field on the mountain lines and create an open lane. I mean, it seems like our confidence has absolutely just shot up since we, we scored that goal. They're playing much, much quicker. They're moving the ball quickly. That, that pass didn't work out. I mean, that was such a good idea. Yeah. That we were just pinging the ball all over the place on that, that possession. Uh, just seems like that, that goal has really opened us up. And Georgia College is oozing confidence right now. So here we are on the attack again. Omar's daughter on the left side. She has a nice shot. So heads up. It almost looks she tried to draw a foul there in the box. Now Guzman with it as the Mountain Lions will try to go on the counter. Omar's daughter will win the ball. She's trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Guzman. Gets around her and then ends up begging a defender and it works out. We keep possession. And now Brooke Adams has the ball and we'll just go over to Aaron Ferris on the right side. See if we can find Ruiz. It's all right though, we'll take a throw in, move the move some players up the field a little bit. Oh, Uno has to be one of the Peach Belt leaders in, in Nutmegs. Oh, uh, 100%. If she's not first, then I really don't know who is. She, I swear, Nutmegs, at least four players a game. At least. And they're, they're pretty good, too. <laughs> like ESPN worthy. Too much speed on that ball for Alyssa Bergamini. as Miranda Simpson looks to toss it down the line for Young Harris. Instead, she goes to Guzman, and she'll just clear it up to Rabio. And now Patton has some space. Asbel with the ball in the middle of the field for the Bobcats. Takes her time, makes a nice cut up the field, has space, finds Balzano. Balzano is dispossessed by Hadley Hughes. And Duvall has to clear it out. Patton hits Jeffries in the head almost. And she'll send it out for a goal kick. Ashley Graham will take it. Graham in her highlighter green uniform today. <laughs> yeah, the keeper keeper kit's looking nice this year. Yeah, they are. They are. I'm sure she's loving it. Uh, everyone loves a good uniform. Kick is away. Balzano has it midfield now. Bergamini on the left side, getting tracked by Guzman. Alyssa looks across. She gets it with her left foot. Touched by the keeper, though, and... They're going to call that a goal kick. I couldn't tell if the keeper knocked it out or if it just went out before. But the players will reset as Van Koppen looks to send it back the other way. Nothing too tricky for the young Harris goalkeeper so far other than that one Lekas goal. I mean, she has not really had any pressure put on her. Um, yeah, but, that's been our, I think, our only shot on target today. Ended yeah. up in the back of the net. Nice shoulder touch there by Balzano. As if she would have kept that, it would have been a nice look for the Bobcats. Good read by Hannah Asbell to step up and take or intercept that ball. Excuse me. And Miranda Simpson, the the right back for Young Harris, has been their best player so far. I mean, she's really been been locking down everything. Yes, yeah, she has. And I guess the commentator's curse is also for the other team. First action there for Van Koppen as she has finally put some pressure on her. The Bobcats put some pressure on her. 
That pass just a little bit too strong gave gave her an opportunity to come out and grab it, which she did with relative ease. Ferris battling with Serrano. Ferris stays with it. Oh, and hits Ruiz right in the face. The ball go out for a young Harris throw in. Kai Jeffries taking command of the midfield. As usual. As, yeah, per usual. Bonzer looking for Uno on an overlapping run. No good. But Bergamini has it. Omar's daughter on the left side. Omar's daughter can cross. Instead, she'll just send a little blooper into the keeper. As it might have been a little miss hit there. She was looking for a cross. Ends up going straight into the keeper's hands. Yeah, that ball fell on her, her weaker left foot. It looked like she had a little bit of time to get it back on her on her right to get maybe yep. a shot away. Uh, but she elected to go with the left, but it didn't work out for her. Oh, nice little move there from Ferris as she nutmegs number 24, Serrano, to keep that ball in play. Aaron Ferris playing with that Atlanta soccer swag yeah. on that right side. Attended Grady High School. There's a lot of great club programs in Atlanta, and, and there's a lot of the players on this Bobcat team, and I'm sure a lot of players from around the Peach Belt that have come from clubs in the inner city Atlanta area, Forsyth area. Uh, but, yeah, I, there was a lot of good soccer clubs uh, in high school, and these girls were trained well. As Just to the, clarify, Forsyth is not Atlanta. Well, yeah, but, like, it's <laughs> near it. You know, it's close. It's not Rome where it's two and a half hours away, you know. Forsyth, you travel 30 minutes, you're in downtown Atlanta. Yeah, 30 minutes, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you proved my point. <laughs> Good ball there from Duvall. Just a little too much on it. Omar's daughter might be a little bit tired now from all of those runs that she does up the left side. I mean, look how high up she's playing. She's a left back, and she's literally playing... 25 yards into the other, to the attacking third of the field. Yeah, it looks like we're almost just playing with like a three-man back right now with Asbel in the middle almost. Yeah, I mean, Uno pretty much has a free reign to play wherever she wants on the field. She's good enough and good enough on the ball and getting forward to, to have that freedom. Good ball in here. That back line for Young Harris has been playing great defense tonight. They sure have with Johnson, Simpson, and number 14, Muscat, in the back. Also, I think it's 21 in the middle. Yeah, Hadley Hughes. Hadley Hughes is also playing great defenses. They've only allowed that one goal, but, I mean, really stopped just about every run that comes up, the, comes up either side. Anya Mancinelli checking into the game. She was the uh, the starting forward last week, or yeah, last week against Clayton State, playing for the injured Amanda Bartholomew. Balzano got the start today, but Mancinelli checking in. I mean, that's what that's what we've been talking about the the depth that we have. I mean, Mancinelli is such an experienced, great player. Yeah. To have her coming off the bench is such an advantage that Georgia College has. It's almost like a a secret weapon for us. A nice move there from Bonzer. She is fouled. But yeah, plenty plenty seniority on this on this on this soccer team. Omar's daughter almost never leaves the game. Duvall in the back, a senior that's stepped up big this year. It's a short free kick goes to Jeffries as she plays wide right to Aaron Ferris. Ferris plays in. Has Omar's daughter naked on the backside. Omar's daughter takes a rip. And it bounces off Hughes. And Hughes will just go up and kick it out of bounds. Omar's daughter had no one near her for a solid three seconds. Had plenty of time to take a shot. And she did. Yeah, she did cut it back onto that right side, but that gave the defender an opportunity to, to close her down and get that critical deflection in. But to have a player like Anya Mancinelli who has four goals and two assists on the season, yeah, I mean to have her being coming off the bench, I mean that's just such such a, a benefit that Hope Clark has that she has a lot of great young talent, but a lot of great leadership 
and experience with the older players as well. And that's something that you like you really don't see often. But yeah. this Georgia College team is just has depth from senior to freshman. And the Young Harris squad now on the attack. It seems like it's been a while since they've been down here. Asbel is going to try and let this roll out. I don't think it's going to, though. And she'll tap it out, and it'll be a corner. But yeah, back to your point of just the depth that this team has with, with no more Amanda Bartholomew, at least for what we know right now. A bit, they, we really need to step up up top. And Anya Mancinelli, uh, some of the Berg, or the Bergamini twins, and Brooke Adams are going to have to have a big finish to this season if the Bobcats want to have um, a good run in the Peach Belt Tournament. I think that's, that's one of the, the great things about the, this Georgia College team this year and why we, they've been so successful. I mean, the, with a record of 10, 3, and 3 on the season, yeah. I mean, they really have gotten contributions from all over the place. Last season, it seemed like it was a lot of the attacking was just coming from Amanda Bartholomew. Yeah. They relied on her a lot. Um, but this year, I mean, we have, you know, Sophia Lekas with nine goals this season. Mancinelli's got four. Cassie Balzano, Alyssa Bergamini, and Uno have three each. Oh. I mean, there's just a lot of production coming from all over the field for the Bobcats from front to back. I mean, Uno, one of the leading goal scorers for the team, is a left back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, plenty of goal scoring options for the Bobcats. We just got to finish it out and keep a spot in the tournament. Again, Young Harris sitting on right on the edge of the tournament at the seven seed currently if the standings stay the same. But, yeah, this is a big game, like you mentioned at the start. This is a big game for either team. A loss for Young Harris might put them out of the tournament. And a loss for Georgia College might drop them in a little bit of, you know, not looking good if they lose. I mean, we get Columbus State, you know, ranked third in the nation. Yeah. Sitting there at 9-0 and in the Peach Belt up top. I mean, you're going to... You're going to wonder what the seating's like, and you're going to want to avoid them for as long as possible yeah. in the Peach Belt Tournament. The Georgia College beaten, was it 3-0 or 3-1 against Columbus State earlier this season? Oh, no, it was, um, I think, 4-0. 4-0? Yeah, 4-0. I remember I remembered telling Al Weston, I was like, hey, we're going to go into Columbus and, and win. He goes, and he kind of giggled. He goes, well, there's not many teams that can go into Columbus and win. Nice interception there from Ruiz as she's just taken off. Causing a lot of pressure on that back line, Ruiz is, with her speed. As the Bobcats can push up and, and create some pressure on the Mountain Lions back, back four. Ferris tosses it to Ruiz. Rabio now on the ball, sending it up to number 11, Roche. Rabio has great control of the ball in the midfield. Her and Guzman play a lot alike, but just on opposite sides of the field. Asbel now. Patton back to Simpson. Great takeaway there from Alyssa Bergamini as the Bobcats go on the counter. Bergamini with speed. Maybe should have kept that ball. Oh, never mind. Finds Ruiz. Great save from Von Campen. And an absolutely spectacular run by Alyssa Bergamini. Took the ball from the midfield just to the edge of the box and finds a perfect pass over out on the right side to Kayla Ruiz. But the goalkeeper comes out and is brave, gets down quickly and makes that save and keeps, uh, keeps Young Harris's lead. But a fantastic looking counterattack from Georgia College. And you gotta say Young Harris is lucky that this game isn't equal right, tied right now. Yeah, I, I honestly don't, I, I was curious of why she passed it. I was, she had so much space, but she saw Ruiz on the right side and she just squeezed it all the way up in through the defenders. And it, was, it ended up being a nice attacking play from the Bobcats. Omar's daughter on the ball. She has plenty of room. Finds Brooke Adams. And just a little too much on that as the keeper will pick it up and they'll reset. Well, this kind of creativity, this is what you want to see out of the Bobcats. I mean, that pass was so bold from Uno. It would have, been, would have taken a really, really special ball to pull it off. Uno has that skill and uh, Brooke Adams has, or I'm sorry, Anya Mancinelli has the ability to get in behind that defense and time those runs really well. But Georgia College playing really, really confident, confidently right now and creating chances left and right. Adams fighting with Rabio, and Adams wins that battle. Ferris. 
trying to find Brooke Adams up front. Sophia Bonzer working on Guzman in the midfield. That'll be a foul. She just kind of caught her the back of her foot. It'll be a free kick for the Mountain Lions just behind midfield as everybody slowly is walking up towards the 18. Number 21, Hadley Hughes sends it up. It's a slow roller. Somehow gets through, though. Robayo is being tracked by Jeffries. And it'll be a throw in almost at the sticks for Young Harris. And the rare misplay there from, from Kai Jeffries. She stepped up confidently and tried to intercept that. Got a slight touch on it, but, but let it run through. So she'll be disappointed in that. Decent ball in, but Ashley Graham mostly untroubled and a fantastic ball from Graham. Yeah. Oh, uh, she was on. I was I was looking at the ref. I thought she might have been off. Mancinelli will let it go out. And that'll be the first quarter of the game for the Bobcats. I was thinking the exact same thing. I was immediately when that ball was played, I looked straight across the field to the assistant. Kept his flag down, though. Yeah. The college earns a corner kick. Waved it off. And she honestly looked offsides to me, and that's why I was curious. And that was pretty clear. I mean, she was with the last defender. It looked like she was just a little bit past her, but. Oh, man. I don't know who got ahead on that, but it was one of the Bobcats, and it goes out for a goal kick. Von Koppen will send it away. Seven minutes left here in the first half. Young Harris, two. Georgia College, one. Both equal five shots today. I don't know. Uh, the on-goal shots. Georgia College takes the lead with their sixth shot. <laughs> <laughs> and almost a late whistle there. Yeah, that was a very late whistle. I'm really unsure about that call. There didn't seem like there was a whole lot in that. And especially, he, not sure the referee thought there was a whole lot in that yeah. too, but with the delay in the whistle there. Another free kick for Young Harris. Hughes to take it. She sends it. This one's a little better. Rabio tried to find Simpson. Taken away by Bergamini. Bergamini and Rabio getting physical. Bergamini wins it. Sends Mancinelli down the left side. Bobcats on the counter. Mancinelli plays back into Bergamini. Bergamini tries to get it back one more in the middle. Met by three defenders, though. Ferris plays back up to Ruiz. Ruiz lets it roll by. We'll get a cross off. Has Mancinelli. Bergamini just off of Mancinelli's head. Couldn't get it. We're going to keep going. And now here come the Mountain Lions on the attack. Great defense there from Savannah Duvall. As this game's getting a little bit chippy as we're just going back and forth. And this has been such an open first half. This has been a really, really fun game to watch. Yeah, Both has. teams are really going after it. And when, when you look at the, the postseason implications, it, there's no surprise that both teams are really going for it. This is you know, almost a must-win game for Young Harris and Georgia College looking to improve their seeding in the Peachfield Conference. Yeah. So both teams are really going after it. This is a, a really fun game. There's been a lot of free kicks called right here in the midfield area. So the midfielders on both teams are... Kind of getting physical with each other. It's a little late in the first half. Georgia College wants to even it up here, and Young Harris wants to go in with a lead and come out with a little momentum in the second half. Graham with a short kick up to Duvall on the left side. Duvall plays to Uno. Uno surrounded, makes a move. Nice shot, though, from Uno, but just right into the goalkeeper. Von Koppen didn't have any trouble with that. If Uno had a little more pace on that shot, it might have been something. Yeah, and Von, Von Kampen knew exactly what Uno was doing there. I mean, she uses her body well and get that ball onto her right foot. And when she taking it with that right foot, it's always going to be curling inside. Yep. Couldn't quite place it or confuse the keeper enough to, to really cause much trouble, but really well read by Von Kampen. All credit to her. Guzman and Rabio trying to play the one-two. Jeffries, nice interception. She could just keep going. And she and Simpson seem to collide. Both ladies seem okay, though. It'll be a goal kick. 
great attacking play there from Kai Jeffries. And she really laid her body out on the line there to try and get that ball up to Bergamini on the left side. Didn't get it, or excuse me, got a little too much of it. Bonzer in the middle. Uno, nice little move to center it back up. Jeffries and Robayo going at it. Robayo now trying to send number 13, Mackenzie Roach. And Roach could not catch that ball at all. Savannah the ball on the left side. Three minutes left in the game. Rabio uses her body a lot to try and win the ball. And she's been pretty successful with it all game. She's been falling down a lot. Looks like she's going for a foul call every time. Yeah. But the, the ref didn't give it to her that time. Brooke Adams tried to squeeze it through the right side of Ruiz. Nothing going. That was really well read. I mean, that le left back didn't even track Ruiz's run, but just knew exactly where the ball was going to be and positioned herself accordingly. So can the Bobcats even it up here right before halftime. Mancinelli in the middle. It has been on the left side of the field most of these or most of the last 10 minutes as the Bobcats are just fighting for possession now. And down goes Rabio. As we were just talking about her being on the ground a little too much trying to find those foul calls and it might just be Young Harris trying to milk out the clock here and run it into halftime up 2-1. Yeah, Young Harris will be will be happy to see or hear this this halftime whistle whistle blow. I mean, Georgia College just has been just at their throats for mm -hmm. the past 10, 15 minutes, and Hope Clark will be honestly a little bit disappointed that they haven't equalized by this point. A lot of really good chances for Georgia College, especially that Kayla Ruiz chance in the yeah. box. I mean, he took a fantastic save by Van, Van Kampen, but the young, young Harris side will be will be really pleased with a, a one goal lead because Georgia College has, honestly, they've played better this half despite going down two goals. I mean, conceding off of a set piece and, yeah. then, a, and then a you know a mistake in the box that gave a penalty away. You know, we, we weren't playing our best, but you know, both their goals came off of like, not, not Pre either, preventable, not, preventable plays. Neither of their goals were out on in open play. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like we're defending poorly, you know. Ruiz on the attack. Yeah, she's moving. Finds Bergamini on the left side. Man, we just cannot. We just keep having heavy touches, and it allows the defender to just get in, step in, and clear it. Ball goes out of bounds. 38 seconds left on the clock. Into Bergamini. And Georgia College, honestly, just don't give up a goal here. <laughs> I just tried to do a man on call for Kai Jeffries from the from the box. Hey, she can hear us. She'll she'll hear us when she listens to us later. If they do that. <laughs> about ten seconds left. Jeffries in the middle. Jeffries needs to shoot. She's thinking about it. Tries to chip it up forward. Nothing going. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll be the first half. Young Harris up two to one off of two set piece goals, really. We will be back with you in about two minutes to give a little half halftime recap. Uh, but stay with us, folks. Young Harris up two to one over Georgia College here on the last home game for the Bobcats season. We'll be back in about two minutes.
In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student-athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student-athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student-athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. As Division II student athletes, we are committed to being our best. Division II National SEC is proud to partner with the Sports Science Institute to play a role in the cardiac safety and health of student athletes. Although many student athletes with heart conditions live healthy, active lives, up to 10 NCAA student athletes die each year of sudden cardiac death during athletic activities. The facts are that immediate delivery of CPR and AED saves lives, so everyone should be CPR and AED trained. Please join us in this important initiative. Make it yours. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. We're here. Yay! It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Change is constant. Technologies, careers, society. Georgia College is not about landing your first job. It's about preparing for success in a changing world. From the moment you step on campus, you have an immediate sense of belonging. At Georgia College, learning takes place all around us. Our students are critical thinkers, ready to graduate into a complex world. Georgia College, your public liberal arts university. Technologies, careers, society, it is impossible to predict the future. The jobs of tomorrow may not even exist today. At Georgia College, you will learn to be a critical thinker to develop new ideas and out-of-the-box solutions. Because those are the kind of lifelong skills you'll need in a rapidly changing world. The way we see it, it's not really about what you know. It's about how you think. Georgia College, 
your public liberal arts university. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? Hey, Banks. Have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son, or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> Is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, T, move down. It's a tearjerker! We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. What you've gained as a student will be just as important to you as what you did as a player. As long as you know that you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable, there's no failure. Success on three. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes. And just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. The American dream to me as an immigrant means having the opportunities that my parents didn't have. Being the first one in my family to graduate, it meant everything my parents sacrificed for me to get to this point. It was paying off. Estoy muy orgulloso de Michael por haberse graduado de colegio. My path to a college degree would have been completely different had I not had a scholarship. It would just relieved a lot of the financial burden. I knew that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 Baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today.
Yeah, sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. And welcome back to Bobcat Field here at Georgia College's beautiful West Campus. We are at halftime, just a couple minutes away from the start of the second half between Georgia College and Young Harris. Young Harris leading 2-1 to one in a very exciting first half of play with both teams really going after it as this game has postseason implications yep. for both sides. But Riley, what are you expecting the second half? Well, I'm expecting Georgia College to come out firing. Uh, they, they really need to set the tone early. They, uh, they have the firepower, like we discussed, all first half. They have the firepower to score. Lekas on the, on the left side. Mancinelli, whoever's up top in the middle, definitely can do it. And uh, I think we got to have some really good backline play. Our backline play has been good so far. We have let two goals in, but... That's it's over. It's past the second half, new half, zero zero right now in their minds. At least that's what Coach Clark is telling them to do or telling them right now. It's zero zero. So as long as the back line plays like they've been playing all year, and we just get some nice passes, get the open lanes, and I think what we what another thing we need to do is we need to switch the ball a little more, get the ball moving around, be a little bit more confident in our passes. And once we get that confidence going, it's it's pretty easy, like we like we've seen before. I mean, Converse 5-0, we've 2 0'd Clayton State. I mean, we can do it. It's just whether or not we're gonna have the confidence to, or not. So. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Georgia College has been been solid all season long, and at the back, a couple a couple mistakes there in that that first half, really uncharacteristic of yep. the Bobcats this season. They only let in 10 goals this, se uh, this season before today's game. Yep. Uh, so Georgia College is looking to solidify, maybe be a little bit more solid in possession at the back end of the midfield. There's been been some giveaways that have, haven't really been necessary yep. for Georgia College. So I'm really really looking for the Bobcats to be to be a little bit more solid, a little bit more more confident on the ball. We've been playing a little bit a little bit timid at times in that yep. first half, but uh, I'm ready for Georgia College to come out and play their confident brand of soccer that we know that they have the ability to do. Yep, yep. And and Ashley Graham, I she's had some pressure in the back, and this is the first game I've really seen Ashley Graham kind of under pressure. She didn't really couldn't really do anything on that first header uh, that the Mountain Lions scored. Um, that was number three Miranda Simpson that scored it for them. Um, but yeah, she and at, at times I wonder if her height gets in the way. I mean, not saying she's super small, but she's kind of small for the keeper. Our, our other keeper is like pushing six foot, um, and 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 a man or excuse me, Ashley's right at like five eight five nine. But she's cover. She can cover a lot of ground, and as long as Ashley, I think, has a clean sheet, and then we can knock in two or three this half or 
excuse me, one or two this half. I don't wanna I don't wanna be anything too overconfident for the Bobcats, but as long as we can do that, I think we'll have a a solid performance, maybe even a dub here at Bobcat Field. And we are underway in the second half as the, the ball has just started to get rolling. And a little bit of a we're gonna get you the picture soon. Don't worry, we're trying, folks. Nothing much has happened so far. Don't, don't be too concerned. Here we go, folks. Here we go. We're learning over here. It's okay. It's okay. Everybody's learning. But back into the game anyways. Bonds are now with the ball. Bobcats going left to right. Mountain Lions right to left. Peterson on the ball, sends it up to Roche. Roche battling. Bonds are now with it. Little space here for Jeffries. She can work with it. She can carry. She gives up to Lekis. Lekis plays forward to Becca Morris. Something going there. Becca Morris not the quickest, but has great ball handling skills. Here goes someone quick. Sophia Lekis down the left side. Cuts back into the right, but that was read pretty perfectly by number three, Miranda Simpson. Crossed all the way over. We have Ferris open on the right side. Ferris will cross it back in. Becca Morris one time, but that'll go out for a goal kick as it bounced off. I can't tell, is that Anya or is that Brooke Adams? I think that's Anya. That is Anya. Not entirely sure. Yeah. But a fantastic idea from Aaron Ferris, I mean, ball kind of found her found her found its way across the yep. field i mean switching the ball just like we were talking about at halftime but aaron ferris took her time and picked out the the perfect pass to becca morris at the top of the box becca morris made good contact couldn't quite get the direction uh required to put that on frame but a really good idea from the bobcats and positive play to start the second half here morris tries to send uno on an overlapping run down the left side that was red great there by guzman Duvall now has it in the back, and we'll go all the way to the back as Rabio tried to track it all the way to Graham back there. And the pressure from the Mountain Lions will earn them a throw-in. Maybe a little bit of an ill-advised back pass from, yeah. from Duvall. She didn't really turn and see where, where her defenders or where Ashley Graham was. Uh, Ashley Graham had to come out a lot to get on that, but uh, maybe... We need to be a little bit more solid at the back with, the, with these passes. Because that was uh, pu putting our keeper under a little bit of unnecessary pressure. That's avoidable. Ruiz on the right. Trying to play 1-2 with Ferris. Ends up going in the middle of the Becca Morris. Like I said, Morris can keep the ball. She knows how to keep it at her feet. And she showed it right there. Lekas trying to possess on the, on the left side. And a little too much juice on that ball for Mancinelli. Morris taps it out outside the foot to Ruiz. Ruiz plays it easy to Ferris. The Bobcats have some attacking power now. Ball goes into Lekas. Lekas, nice turn. And that is cleared out by number 21, Hed Hedley Hughes. Good look there for the Bobcats, though. The lovely bit of skill and a close control from Sophia Lekas as Kai Jeffries commits that foul. But Sophia Lekis with the under pressure in the box, defender on her back and shakes the defender, but the touch just a little bit too heavy, gets away from her. And Young Harris able to survive, but Georgia College, again, playing very positive and very aggressive here to start this second half. And here we go, Mancinelli has Ruiz. Oh, wide open, she just couldn't make the pass. Maybe, the, maybe there was a lane that we just couldn't see. Lekas on the ball, makes a nice move up the right side. Lekas tries to shoot, blocked by Johnson. Lekas has had a couple opportunities already this second half. You can see Le Sophia's mouth was watering as that middle opened up for her, and she was able to get the ball on her right foot, but closed down just at the last minute. Jeffries trying to work on Guzman, and she'll lose the ball there, throw in for Young Harris. That was a good little overlapping run there by Kai Jeffrey, showing the offensive side of her skill set. 
Kai Jeffries is really the the definition of a box to box midfielder. Yep, yep, for sure. She knows how to go both ways and can go both ways fairly well. We, I feel like every game that I've broadcasted this season, we've just been saying her name just her so and Uno. often. Her and Uno. They're the two, I, I feel like, the two most technical players on the field for the Bobcats. Or, excuse me, not technical, two most versatile players on the field for the Bobcats. Duvall. Both, both, both players so good going going forward and tracking back. Yep. I mean, with with Kai Jeffries, it seems like they, they, she's getting forward a little bit more than usual. It seems like Sophia might be dropping back a little bit deeper. Yep. And speaking of Sophia, she's going, cuts left this time, tries to draw a foul. Cleared away by Simpson, though. Speaking of a different Sophia, <laughs> I was talking about Bonzer. Oh, Bonzer. Oh, <laughs> different Sophia. There are two. We've there got are a, two. We've got a lot, lot of multiple names on this team. We've got Bergamini twins. We've got Asbel sisters. Yeah, hey, speaking of names, two though. Sophias. Speaking of names, who, who do you think? has the most unique name on this Bobcats team. Well, I mean, Riley, I'm go I've got to be a little bit biased here. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, Ashley's last name is just fantastic. It, really, it, it is, you know. It you is. know, as, as someone named Graham myself, you know, I just have a really, really profound appreciation for Ashley's last name. So. You know what? I'll, I'll stick with it. I love it. I mean, if I there's mean, a Graham on the team, you're number one in the broadcasting community, you know. You're number one in my heart. <laughs> so the Graham has to go for number one. I think I think Uno might have something to say about that. She might. She might. She's deaf. The Icelandic native definitely has a cool name, too. Omar's daughter. But anyways, back to the game. Sorry, I had to get sidetracked there. I'm going to go Ferris. You know, we talk, talked about that before the game, and and I wasn't going to do it. You know, I, I wasn't going to talk about it. I wasn't either, but you brought up the perfect opportunity for was, me to start it. It was not intentional, I guarantee it. <laughs> Camer cameraman Brooks is excited about that one. He was, man. And shout out to all the, the cameramen and women we have here in the sports information department. All the technology operators, I guess we'll call them. They do a great job here. All student run. Headed up by Al Weston. And we're getting back in the action, though, with Young Harris has been on the attack for the past couple of minutes. Kind of had the Bobcats on their heels after a hot start on the attack for Georgia College. Number 24, Bainey Serrano tried to get something going there. It was blocked by Aaron Ferris. As Ferris kind of <laughs> all the way from the right side into the middle has been playing all over the field this second half. Ferris kind of stretching out, making sure she's all right, staying loose and limber at least because it is getting a little bit chilly here in Millie. I put on my flannel at halftime. I put on my jacket at halftime. We're, diff we're different people. <laughs> Good ball in. Mancinelli was there. Ruiz had the right idea. But Von Kampen had it read all the way. And Von Kampen is just so confident coming off of her line. I mean, she's yeah. done it a few times now. A couple times just, just to grab the ball, you know, on, on long balls that are played through. But she's so quick off of her line to, to shut down any any hope that Georgia College has is getting on the end of these long balls. I mean, and, and then when Kaylee Ruiz had the ball at her feet, yeah. Van Kampen was so confident closing her down and got down so quickly to make that save. I've been really impressed by the by the play of Young Harris' goalkeeper today. Be a goal kick for Von Kampen as Lekas. Knocked it out of bounds. Von Coppen sets up on the six, getting ready to launch it forward in play. And goes to the left side as number 16, Elon Peterson, gets a foot on it. Now Mancinelli tried to step in and get it. Uno, Omar's daughter. Oh, wow. Nice little skill there from Uno. I mean, how many defenders do you see playing with that kind of confidence when they're on their back line? I mean, she she w has no fear when it comes to dribbling players, no matter where she is on the field. You're usually taught to be a little bit more secure when you're playing with the ball at the back for obvious reasons. Yeah. 
but Uno was not taught that way, and it shows with the kind of skill that she plays with at that left back position. And I, I guess it helps playing because she, she's played semi pro over in Iceland. So I mean, the training she's had growing up, just in a in a country where where soccer is the number one sport, as in not in America, it's it's really not the number one sport at all. It's the bottom tier of sports, according to a lot of people. So Uno, growing up in the Icelandic world, it has a has may, might have a lot to do with uh, her skill set and how she learned to play the game. Good ball through from Asbel though. Morris. Morris still on the ball somehow. She's and it's knocked out. It'll be a Bobcat throw in. Great possession there for Becca Morris. The Georgia College supporters showing their appreciation. You can hear the, the sound getting loud for, for her effort on the ball. Nice little one touch pass from Antonelli to swing it back out. Lekis now on the ball in the middle. Lekis tries to step over to bring it to the right. No good for her. It'll go all the way back to Savannah Duvall. Going back, going back to Uno. I mean, speaking of speaking of the devil on the ball now, but how often? Like, I feel like she's really just catching the attackers by surprise when she's, you know, pulling these skill moves out yeah. of out of the out of her. I mean, her you don't, you don't, you're not supposed to. That's not normal. So an attacker's really not used to seeing it. So it almost will just throw it, throw an attacker off when a defender does these moves. So it almost, it definitely works in Una's favor. But anyways. Back on the counter are the mountain lines, but that was short-lived as Ashley Graham. It's been kind of a keeper war, just back and forth. Bo a lot of touches for both keepers so far in this first half. Or, excuse me, second half. Wow. It's been a long day. Just, we're playing two first halves. Look at that. Never been done before. I know. It really hasn't. Atlanta United came, down, came back from 4-1 to win 4-3. And we're playing two first halves today. We are. Pigs fly. Pigs fly. And Bobcats, um, I don't know. I was going to say something cool, but I just, I don't know. Anyways, like is now speeding up the left side of the field. Has Jeffries. Jeffries made a nice run there, and Lekis will get another call. Lekis is, I don't want to say been lucky with these calls, but she's definitely deserved some of the calls on the left side today. Yeah, Miranda Simpson was definitely unhappy with that. She she thought that Sophia went down a, a little bit too easily, but I think uh, I think the foul was called from from a little bit of a tug a few yards before Sophia went down. It's up and away. It'll be short, right into the keeper. Von Kampen had no trouble. A drop kick. Oh, she drop kicks. That's mm -hmm. interesting. I didn't even notice that. I just noticed that the, the the last the last time she had the ball in the box. Interesting. I feel like that's not as accurate. But I guess if you practice it that way, it's almost just the exact same thing. And if you practice anything enough, you can really yeah. really get get good at it. There's a lot of things that you know professional athletes do that I'm just amazed at the simplicity of it. But yeah, you know when that's what you do for a living. Or at least for a scholarship. <laughs> I was about to say, same thing, scholarship, living. Almost same thing in college. It'll be a young Harris throw in on the right side of the field. Or excuse me, free kick. Bonzer gets a piece of it. Nice little bit of skill to get it away. Lekis now streaking up the middle of the field. Goes all the way, almost to the right side. Has Ruiz wide open, plenty of space. Ruiz will just send it back. Lekas is there. Mancinelli's there. And it's cleared away by Johnson. Sophia Bonzer thought she had it there too. Wow, nice build up play by the Bobcats and it's not over yet. Kai Jeffries on the ball. Oh wow, what a foul there. Oh, and that was, I think that was 20. It's Rabio, Rabio. And, and as a particularly vocal Georgia College fan pointed out just a second ago, Georgia College is knocking at the door. I mean, chance after chance here. That ball from Kayla Ruiz from the right side was so good. Sophia Lekas just 
miss getting on the end of that as she was coming in from the top of the box and Mancinelli was able to get on the end of it but couldn't quite get the pace behind it to, to cause any problems. But Kai Jeffries earns a free kick in a dangerous position for Uno who's got that rocket of a right leg. Omar's daughter stutter steps, hits the wall, gains possession back. And Rabio, man, I don't. She's getting away. I feel like with a lot of a lot of contact. Yeah, that was definitely a miss miss call there. As Uno was ready to skip past the defender, Rabio made no attempt to go for the ball and just stopped Uno's progress. So I'm surprised there wasn't a foul call for obstruction there. And if I was Hope Clark, I'd I'd might have a word with the with the with the middle ref here on on Rabio specifically. Lekis is battling. It's still in. No, it's not. I was kidding. It went out. It is a goal kick. Yeah, all the young Harris hands went up. Sophia Lekis was obviously still playing, though. But Cassie Balzano has checked into the game for Anya Mancinelli. Straight swap up top. Striker for striker. Cassie Balzano, the sophomore. She's had a pretty similar role to what she did freshman year. Yep. Definitely has gotten on the score sheet with a couple goals and an assist here and there. Lekas, said her name a lot, tries to cross it in. Morris comes in hard, ball first. Lekas now has the, the shot attempt. Cuts to her left, cuts back to her right. Finds Balzano, and it almost scrapes in. Great little pass there from Lekas. Balzano, just not enough on it. Great save by Von Kampen. And Von Kampen really did well getting down quickly to her left side. Sophia Leck is doing a really good job cutting back left and right, really weave, trying to weave through that defense. Uh, trying to, she can be a little bit predictable at times, but she was really doing a good job keeping the defense on their heels there and found a great pass to Balzano and it forced a good save from Von Kampen. Nice touch there for Becca Morris. She found Aaron Ferris down the right side. Ferris tried to sneak it through two defenders there. But here comes Rabio on the counter. Rabio and Roche on the left side. It's a 4v2, or really 6v2 four, four, now. Omar's daughter, header, tries to clear it. Roche somehow comes up with the ball. Ashley Graham, what a save. Oh my goodness, Ashley Graham is so solid at the back. I mean, that was a fantastic save. High to her right side talking about her, her height earlier, but it doesn't matter when you can, can get up like that. Yeah, that's unreal. But uh, a little bit of a miscue from the back as Sophia Lekis played in, but Von Kampen scoops it up comfortably. But another miscue at the back for Georgia College, yeah. and it leads to a really good chance for Young Harris. I mean, that could have been 3-1 fairly easily there. But Ashley Graham makes a great save to keep Georgia College in the game. Yeah, it was fantastic. She was leaning towards her left because that's the generic way the ball is usually going to go off, off of that type of shot. But it ends up going back to her right. So she's leaning left, jumping right, and somehow gets a hand on, or two hands on that ball. And it was almost kind of easy for her. So there's a, she was what, I think four weeks in a row, Peach Belt Player of the Week. So, I mean, and it's showing tonight. Yeah, Ashley Graham is, there's, not enough can be said about her. I mean, her career here at Georgia College, as it's coming to a close, I mean, has been, you know, she's been such a, a consistent spot there at the back for Georgia College. Kai Jeffries will bring out the book for the keeper as Jeffries receives a yellow card. First one of the game. And earlier in the game, it went a little bit unnoticed, but Kai Jeffries... Swung to, to kick the ball, completely missed and narrowly avoided hitting uh, one of the young Harris players pretty yeah. high. If she had made any kind of solid contact, it could have been bad for Georgia College. We just had a set play off the, off the set piece, and it just goes into the net. Nothing doing there. Four players just ran over the ball. It's almost something you see in the FIFA video game. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like they tried to do a little bit too much yeah. there. Maybe a little more simplicity would, would serve them well. Morris. I, after scoring off a set piece in the first half. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. No, right. you're good. You're good. I'm not going to not gonna knock him too much for it. Graham and I just have too much to say, ladies and gentlemen. 
And we're over here fighting for airtime. That's why we're broadcasters. Exactly. Oh, great defense there by Jeffries. The yellow card is not slowing her down. Bonzer, plenty of time, plays up to Lekas. Lekas overlaps to Uno. Uno just couldn't grab it with her cleat. And it'll go back up the field to Roche. Bonzer with possession, has time, plenty of time. Rabio tracking about 10 feet away, goes out wide to Ferris. Ferris goes into the middle. Nice little vision, nice field vision there from Ferris, but oh goodness. Rubio and Morris really got tangled up there. And you can hear what the, the Georgia College fans yeah. think about about this official. I mean, with how physical Rabio plays, it's it seems a little bit unfair how easily she goes down. And yeah. it's, you know, if the ref's going to keep calling in her favor, I can't blame her for the way that she's played this game. Free kick in for the Mountain Lions. Trapped. A nice, well, not a nice shot, but a shot there from number 24, Bainey Serrano. And it's rolled out by Graham to Omar's daughter. Omar's daughter just taps it into Bonzer. Bonzer brings it around a defender. Somehow Balzano ends up with it. And it's just going to send Ruiz. Ruiz has the speed to get there. It's really a 1v4 right now. Ruiz has no help. Plays Balzano in the middle. Balzano gets stopped. And that was short-lived for the Bobcats. Ooh. Nice move there. Good Almost skill. a handball. But a nice chip over the last player. And that ball somehow gets through as Graham is way off her line. A little scary there. I don't know how... Hope Clark thinks, or what Hope Clark thinks about Graham being that much off her line in that situation. Yeah, there's some confusion there between between Uno and Savannah there at the back. Uno was caught on the wrong side of, of the attacker, and there's a little bit of confusion because Uno was right there, but she definitely needed Savannah's help to come over. And, you know, actually he's got to be thinking, are either of them going to get the ball? So she's forced to come off her line and, and go get it, but... Uh, luckily, uh, Savannah stepped in and, and cleared the danger for the Bobcats. Now we're going to go back up the left side. Legas tried to play it in the middle to Balzano. And Young Harris is just holding on to this 2-1 lead. Bobcats are, like you said, knocking on the door. There's a, almost an interception there from Serrano, but Fair is stuck with it. Serrano back on it, plays in the middle to Rabio. Asbel gets a touch on it. It'll just roll back to Ashley Graham, though. She'll pick it up. You know, we really need to see the Bobcats just value the ball here. Yeah. You know, we've we've been giving the ball away a lot. There hasn't been any kind of consistent possession. I mean, it's it goes both ways for, for both teams. No team has really been holding the ball very well. But we've been giving the ball away unnecessarily almost every time. So we need to we need to be more solid and really really take our time. It seems like we're trying to rush things. Like it seems like we're playing a little bit nervous, just because we're behind. Omar's daughter, nice move to get around a defender, but yeah, it'll be offsides. I I did think it was offsides, and some unhappy Bobcat fans here. But hey, I guess that's just the game. It'll be a free kick for the Mountain Lions. Pay attention. And Bobcat fans are really letting the referees have it here on this brisk Wednesday night. Lekas on the left. Excuse me, that's, yeah, that's Lekas. It looks like Aaron Ferris, I don't know. I was about to say, what is she doing over there? I guess my eyes just aren't great. I, I really I, I I couldn't tell who it was. <laughs> we have a screen right here in front of us too. Asbel back to Graham. That'll bounce out. It'll be a throw in for the Mountain Lions. Bobcats. Like I said, I've used the term a couple of times tonight, but they're on their heels right now, kind of just playing timid. Yeah, this game is. I mean, what's been so so exciting about this game is like literally. You know, five minutes ago, we're talking about how Georgia College is knocking at the door. 
And then here we are, Young Harris is the one that's going forward. I mean, this game has been so back and forth. It really know? has. We haven't really been able to call it either way. Each team has had really, really good spells attacking, and each team has been really poor going forward as well. So both teams have just been, been not super consistent during this game, which I'm sure both managers aren't going to be happy with. Yeah. Switching it up here on the right side, getting some fresh legs. Alyssa Bergamini coming in for Kayla Ruiz. The freshman has some speed on the right side and the skill to create some opportunities for the Bobcat attack. Melissa Bergamini, usually we see her playing on the left side as she did earlier in this game, but because Sophia Lakis is still in, they're going to keep her in her natural position. Graham will come out of the box to take this free kick. Riley, every time you talk about Ashley Graham and you refer to her by her last name, I could just get a little bit confused, just like for a split second, and then I realize who has the ball. <laughs> Graham will come out of his box <laughs> to take the free kick. <laughs> I'm staying up here. I'm not taking any kind of free kicks today. I didn't bring my cleats. Oh, yeah, you forgot them. In the, they're yeah. in the locker room still. <laughs> Graham's on the injury reserve. Hard foul there, though, by... Colleen Johnson, the center back for the Mountain Lions. It'll give the Bobcats a free kick about 30 yards outside the box. So we'll crowd inside the box a bit. Maybe create some confusion moving around. We got Uno in the box. Bonds are in the box with some height. Becca Morris can keep it at her feet. Uno's moving around. Duvall will take the kick. Short kick. Jeffries is open. Jeffries is just going to play it back out to Ferris. And ever they're asking for it, Ferris sends it in, but it's short. Ferris will keep possession of the ball. Play it down line to Bergamini. Bergamini, nice move to get around the defender. Bergamini. Kind of a slow cross in. That'll be cleared out. It'll be a throw in for the Bobcats, but almost a wasted opportunity there on a... Pretty advantageous free kick position. Jeffries is going to try and switch the field. Has Omar's daughter open. She finds her. Omar's daughter almost going to rip a shot from midfield. She's confident. You got yeah. like, to like the <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said for, for confidence, but it's going to take something really, really special to beat this keeper from that far out. There's not many people that can do it. Against anyone, really. Great yeah, win she, there from Balzano. You know, if she had hit it from there, that really would have been a, a top 10 play. Yeah, it really would have. We would have sent that to ESPN for sure. Absolutely. Oh, Rabio just broke Lekas' ankles there. It's all right, the Bobcats ended up with it. Guzman knocks it out. It'll be a free kick, or excuse me, a throw in. Jeffries tries to find Lekas down the left side. I'm wondering when Coach might take Sophia out, give her a little rest for this, and then put her back in in about five minutes to provide some more offensive help. But I bet Lekas is a little bit tired. Hasn't been out all the second half. Ferris asking for help. Find some in Balzano. Jeffries has plenty of space. Good turn from Sophia. Sophia's going to take a long shot. It bounces out. The keeper had to make a play for it. But another ambitious try from the Bobcats. I mean, I, li I like the confidence from shooting from that far out, but I mean, we have to be just a little bit more patient in the attacking yeah. third. There's still plenty of time there's, left I in mean, this there's, match. There's 16 minutes left. I know the players are probably getting a little bit anxious because they haven't gotten that equalizer after getting so close to one in that first half. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't just, you know. Kind of give up. You can't lo lose your game plan yeah. just because you want want to get a shot on target. You really yeah. need to, to, to work what we're good at, which is, you know, passing the ball around and moving and making these great runs off the ball rather than just settling for these shots from outside of the box. Yep. Exactly. Asbel had a little trouble reading it. She'll head it. It might get out, and it does. Asbel, a little misplay there. Nothing to be too worried about for the Bobcats. We'll just kind of get a rest, much-needed rest. As 
They'll take their time. 14, Muscat will take her time tossing it in. But I mean, how many how many goals do we score from outside of the box in a season? Maybe four. Uno, Uno, scored, Maybe. Uno scored one. I know Sophia scored kick. one. Sophia scored one. But, I mean, I mean, yeah. just, it, we need to just value the ball more. I mean, we, we've been able to create chances all game long. We don't need to be settling settling for outside shots when we're, we've been able to – you know, move the ball around well enough to create chances pretty much throughout the game. Yeah, and even chances inside the six. Mm -hmm. like we've had a couple of shots inside the six just off of, or excuse me, a couple of crosses inside the six just not right where they needed to be. But we've had the ball inside the six, and that's a really good sign for an attacking offense, and especially for someone who's down one goal and is looking for a late equalizer. Young Harris on the attack. Asbel trying to defend. It's tough to see. There's a pole in my way, but offside is the call. Thank you. Thank Assistant you. had his flag up. There's no pole blocking that view. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling you out, Riley. I know. I know. Graham's being told to back up a little bit. Huh? <laughs> Gosh. Come on, man. Come on. Just finish this game. <laughs> Balzano out to Bergamini. Bergamini will try and win the foot race there, but it's knocked out. Over the head to Balzano. Balzano has space. Has Uno open. Uno with a header. She scored like that last, or excuse me, Monday night. Had a header in the box. But, hey, that's what we're looking for right there. If Uno might... Could have brought that down with her foot. Maybe one, tried to one-touch it with her foot. Get a little more pace on that shot. That might have been a legit opportunity. See, that's better from the Bobcats. I mean, the, you can see every time that we're, we're patient with the ball and wait for our opportunities to come, they do come. Almost every time the, that we have an attack, you know, getting into the, into their in and around their box, we're able to create at least halfway decent chances. So Georgia College just needs to keep doing that, and there's a, a good chance that we're going to have an, an equalize, equalizer in this match. Bergamini on the right. Again into Balzano. Balzano, nice touch. And another interesting call, offsides call that the Bobcat fans don't seem to agree with. Yeah, so Sophia, I, th I think I agree with the assistant on that one. I think Sophia was a little bit, a little bit, quick with her run. Yep. I think I'm inclined to agree with the assistant there. There's definitely been a couple questionable calls, but, you know, they can't get every single call right. Offsides is the, the hardest call to make in soccer. You know, players are moving so quickly across the lines, back lines pushing up, attackers making these quick runs forward. Yep. It's hard to see, but I think that was a, a good call from the assistant. And most of the time, it's just by like a foot or two, mm -hmm. a step, mm -hmm. an inch, and, and, and it can go either way. As there was a physical play there on Becca Morris. But Guzman will regain possession for the Mountain Lions, and they'll switch to the right side, press up. Duvall, nice one-touch clearance. Guzman back to Simpson. Simpson sends it up all the way to Roche. Roche gets a foot on it. Serrano fighting with Jeffries. Jeffries needs to be careful here not to be too physical with the yellow already. And Sophia will, Sophia Leica, excuse me, will draw another foul. Omar's daughter will take the free kick. Wants to go fast. She realizes there's only 12 minutes left. If anything's going to happen, it's going to happen soon. And that's not what she was looking for off the free kick. That's not the patience that, that we need. I mean, she had Kai Jeffries right right in front of her. Yep. But was looking for for the big switch to... Is that Aaron Ferris or yep. Bergamini? Yep. She was looking for the switch all the way to the other side of the field. Didn't get it, though. Bobcats need to play with some urgency here. It's not that they're not. It's just that might need to bring a couple more players up. Need to take some risk here in the final 12 minutes. Yeah, we should, should see players like Sophia Bonds here getting, getting a little bit further forward up the field. You can see Becca Morris playing as that, that number 10 position at the, the center attacking mid. Becca Morris on the ball now. Here she is. Morris does have a nice right foot, so if she can get turned, she might could hit a shot from maybe just outside, but 
We just can't seem to break that defense that the Mountain Lions have set up back there. Asbel and Roche tracking. Asbel will get there first. Graham should reset to the other side, but she's just going to send it back. Bonzer and Robayo on the header. Robayo wins, but Bergamini. Oh, I thought she might have touched with her hand there. Continuing play though. Bergamini working on Serrano, and just I don't know. They're just not looking great right now. Just heavy touches. We just need to calm down and play how we know how to play. You got to give credit to this this young Harris defense. They they got an early lead, and they've really done well to keep it throughout this match. I mean, Georgia College has had opportunities, and it's taken a couple big saves from Van Kampen there at the back. But young Harris has really, really held strong here in this second half, and they've been really compact and solid to limit the, the big scoring chances that Georgia College has the ability to create. And Kai Jeffries, a foul called on her, and she's on a yellow card getting a talking to. Referee likely telling her one more, and it might be another one. And that is a player that Georgia College cannot afford to lose. I mean, one more Peach Belt game to end the year. We, she, Kai Jeffries is such a crucial player for this team that Kai Jeffries really needs to, to keep her wits about her here in the last nine and a half minutes or so to make sure she stays on the field and doesn't pick up a one-match suspension. Mountain Lions off the free kick. Savannah Duvall steps over. Great little move there to try and clear the ball. As Rubio. <laughs> and the Georgia College supporters showing their appreciation for the referee who has given Rubio a long-awaited yellow card. She has committed you know, five or six fouls today. Yeah. And the ref has missed a few more. You know, it, it took a while, but the, the referee finally getting a little bit of control here. 81 minutes into the game. <laughs> you know, usually usually you'll see the, the refs going into their book a little bit earlier in the game to kind of set the tone. But he's waited until pretty late in the second half to, to discipline anybody. So lackadaisical passing from the Bobcats, just creating turnovers, unneeded turnovers. We just, we're just losing time on these turnovers, time that we could be pushing up the field, maybe trying to get a shot off. You're likely going to see young Harris start, start wasting some time here on every dead ball opportunity. Yeah. Rabio just trying to play with our defenders, and she's been successful. She knows how to use her body and maybe just a little too well. You know, she just got the yellow card, but Georgia College, like I said, will need some urgency in their play as some subs come in, getting some fresh legs. Out goes Jeffries, Ferris, and Morris. We got Ruiz back on the right side, and I couldn't see who else came in. Looks like Ruiz is going to be playing right back potentially a natural winger you know right back place i guess similarly yeah. to that to that wing position but that's definitely an attacking change from hope clark to to put a natural winger in that back four but brooke adams also coming into the game and i think hope clark smartly takes out kai jeffries mm -hmm. knowing the how the significance of that that last regular season game Brooke Adams also in for the Bobcats. High throw in for the Mountain Lions. Seven minutes left here at Bobcat Field, folks. Young Harris still holding on to a 2-1 lead that they built early, early in the first half. Omar's daughter into Mancinelli. That was a, a, a bold change. I haven't seen Kayla Ruiz play at the back at all this season. But I think that uh, Hope Clark is definitely going after this game. She's not... She's not settling for, for this win. She wants, she wants to get at least a draw out of this. And there's a, an attack mounting quickly stopped, though, by the Mountain Lions. But I'm not too worried about Ruiz playing that back line position. She comes from a D1 program in Georgia State where I'm sure she learned a lot of different positions um, while, she, while she, her time at Georgia State. 
And now Roche battling this really 4v1 with the Bobcat defense. Rabio pushing up, working on Bonzer. Bonzer will get there first. Almost plays it to Serrano. And Roche might have a shot opportunity for the Mountain Lions. Offsides. Easy offside call for the AR. As Asher Graham will just try and get this away as quick as possible. Five minutes, 45 seconds left, folks. Ruiz keeps it in, plays it to Bergamini. Bergamini finds Adams in the middle. Brooke Adams keeps it. If that could just a little bit higher, Bergamini was there. Great turn from Serrano to try and play it upfield for the Mountain Lions. We're going to go all the way back to Graham. You know, it, it honestly hurts not to have Jeffries in the game right now. I completely understand why Hope Clark took her out, but at the same time, Jeffries has the ability to really break the game open, like when Georgia College regains possession, to really get forward on the counterattack. So yep. that's definitely, definitely a... a a loss for the Bobcats to not have her in the match right now. And that'll go off of Adams. Toss will go to the Mountain Lions as Miranda Simpson take her time throwing it in. Lekis whiffed at it. Somehow stayed with it though. On, ref. ref not blowing his whistle. And Rabio is now back on the ball and she just really can't lose the ball at this point. Almost a really good touch there from Roche, though. Balzano. And unfortunate touch there from Mancinelli right into Balzano's chest. Nice. Having some techers here yeah. late in the game. Brooke, Brooke Adams is sh showing her skill. Just a freshman. You got to go four minutes. Ruiz on the right, playing up to Bergamini. Can we get anything here on this attack? Gonna go, try and go down the right side, excuse me. Bergamini now with the throw in. Ruiz and Bergamini switch positions. God, kept in there by Serrano. A good step. Oh, that's a foul. <laughs> excuse me. That's a foul. Pulled back there from, <laughs> that's a by foul. Serrano. Excuse me. That's still a foul. <laughs> My uh, spectator came out there, not commentator. Sent in by Duvall. Ruiz, oh, I thought she might have just stepped in and one-touched it. And somehow cleared away and kept possession by Young Harris. Young Harris has done a fantastic job of keeping possession here late in the game. Three minutes now left, and there are at, at times five defenders back for Young Harris. Yeah, Young Harris really packing it in. Only only one one player on the other side of the field. Duvall trying to work on the outside, finds Lekas. Lekas with a heavy touch. Met by Rob And Rabio will draw the foul from Lekas. I'm sure Lekas has a couple of choice words for Rabio as she walks by. Or Guzman, excuse me. A quick kick from the Mountain Lions. Graham will take care of it. Graham will send it up. It's a low kick. Adams gets a touch on it, but it'll go right back to the hands of Guzman. Or excuse me, right back to the feet of Guzman. And Guzman and Robayo have seemingly taken over this game. Yeah, they've been the ones that have been doing the heavy lifting for Young Harris as far as keeping possession goes. I mean, they've been the ones that have been holding up the play really well, moving the ball around. I mean, it's been hard. It's been hard for for George College to get them off the ball. And you got to give give them a lot of credit. As as we've criticized Rabio today for for some of her her antics, but you know she's done a done a great job for for the Mountain Lions just keeping possession and closing out this game. As there's just a minute and a half now, it seems like you know the time is just. Where is the time gone in this yeah. second half, really? You're expecting uh, 
a bit of a grandstand finish to this game the way the first half is the first half went but it seems like both both teams have just been not on their a game in the second half and young harris has been been very intentional with the way that they've played the second half to keep their lead and somehow bobcats are just going to move it up out of bounds omar's daughter throwing it one minute remaining now and this might just be it for Georgia College. If we can get one last possession here, we find Bergamini on the left side, or right side, excuse me. And it's just a battle in the midfield, and once for Bio, or excuse me, Guzman gets the ball. Omar's daughter is going to try and make a run. Ball first. That's a fair call, I feel. Cleared out, though, by the back line. Bergamini is fouled. We got to go quick, though. The clock does not stop. Clock stops. Ref stops the clock. Some some of the parents very unhappy with that no call, but it was pretty pretty clear to us that the, the ball was gotten from that slide tackle. But the last, last gas for Georgia College is literally everyone will be up in the box except for Ashley Graham and Hannah Asbell. And Ashley Graham to take... And that might just do it, folks. We got about eight seconds left. It has to be a miracle. And that is it. Georgia College falls here at home. First home loss of the season for the Bobcats as they lose to Young Harris 2-1. to one. Stay tuned, folks. Graham, it was great calling the game with you. We're going to have a... Or, S stay tuned on social media later, folks. We're going to have a post-game interview set up um, for you guys to check out. We'll interview some of the players. But, Graham, overall, what did you think of this game? So, I think that first half, we just did not start well at all. I think that we really shot ourselves in the foot in the first half, you know, giving away fouls, giving away the ball, you know, mm. not defending very tightly on set pieces. I mean, that penalty was, was a real killer. Um, but we just didn't play very cleanly at the beginning of the second half. The, in the last 20 minutes or so in the second half, it was a completely different story, a different Georgia College team. That's the Georgia College that we, we know and love. Yep. But they were so aggressive, creating chances left and right, and they feel a little bit hard done by the, that there wasn't, it wasn't an equalizer by halftime. And then you got to give all the credit to, to Young Harris and their coach. You know, Tactically in the second half, they were so solid. You know, they, they pa really packed it in defensively and really limited Georgia College's opportunities. They possessed the ball well, and they basically just de defended, you know, defended to their teeth, you yeah. know, at, in that second half. And Georgia College was unable to break them down, you know, when the team is going all out in defense to, yeah. to just keep a, a one-goal lead. You know, it takes something re really, really special for uh, to break it down. Yep. But all credit to Young Harris, but Georgia College will be a little bit disappointed by that result. But Young Harris play, played very well. Well, folks, that'll just about do it here from Bobcat Field. Only a few games left in, um, in, re in the regular season for conference. And just in general, the Bobcats have one game left at um, USC Aiken. And that, I don't know, that'll just about do it. Good game here from uh, the Bobcats and from Young Harris. Credit Young Harris for the win. But yeah, thanks for joining us, folks. I'm Riley Williams. That's Graham Hill. And uh, we love watching games with you. So join us next time, and hopefully we'll uh, see you guys in the tournament. Go Bobcats. Go Bobcats.